morning. It's Monday, July 10th, uh, week of MLS All-Star Game. And those of you that listen for a long time know, I do contract work for MLS. And I will be heading down to D.C. where the MLS All-Stars will be taking on Arsenal. I'm heading down there Wednesday. Uh, I've been told I don't start work until Friday afternoon. So I should be online and, and doing a, a podcast every day. Wednesday will be a very quick podcast. So if you're kind of tuning in and seeing some stuff, yeah, I'll, I'll be on uh, pretty much all week. Um, my weekly stock. I will be putting a link in the newsletter. Um, if you guys don't subscribe to my newsletter, uh, go over to dailystockpick.substack.com and subscribe. Um, but I will be putting a link as well in my newsletter um, to Weekly Stock Pick newsletter. Uh, he asked me to do that. He's been growing. Uh, he's been doing great. And, and if you want to subscribe right now, it's just my weekly, uh, myweeklystock.substack.com. He's up 4% in 2023. His strategy is simply just to buy on Monday and sell on Friday. It's a simple strategy. And um, I'll go back here. You can see, look at how well it did. And, and the shocking part was, look at 2022. Now, remember, SPY was down something like, you know, what, 15%? In 2022, this dude was up 13%. Simple. He tracks his performance. You can read all about it. So myweeklysubstack.com. If you're not subscribed to it, I would say subscribe to it. My newsletter, uh, unlike my newsletter, his is completely free. 100% for free. Sign up. Doesn't have a paid newsletter at all. Um, uh, he is fantastic. But my newsletter... I put out, and I've been getting really good response from the grade eight and uh, the psychology of being a trader. Um, my personal opinion is uh, that I like being an investor more, but as far as the psychology goes, I give you a great article that has 24-part lesson on becoming a day trader, and some of, uh, some of the things that they go over is the psychology, and, uh, but it's a paid newsletter. The other thing that I do is take my grade eight. Uh, which if you guys listen, if you subscribe to the newsletter, uh, it will be in there. The grade eight, eight stocks that I think are, are just fantastic uh, that have moved the market this year. It's no shock, but it's the grade eight. I went over a detailed, um, including four hour algorithm, 65 minute algorithm and weekly um, charts that are in there and kind of where I think the grade eight will. I'll go over kind of that later in the week just because I want to give the paid subscribers some value. Um, and I want, want to let them know, hey, I, I value you guys and here's some exclusive stuff. I take a lot of time doing that. So if you want to become a subscriber at the end of every free newsletter, there is a link to actually upgrade. Uh, and if you want to subscribe to anything of mine, uh, linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash daily stock pick. You can look up, you know, the 25% off Trend Spider, which I use, Visible, uh, Weeble. And, and I've been telling people over the weekend, I really like Weeble. Um, Weeble, you can get 12 free stocks if you just lose use that third link down there. Uh, but Linktree has all of my stuff. Now let's talk about the market. Spy. Uh, spy, if we look at a weekly spy, we're still in a bull market. And, and I know it doesn't feel like that because, you know, we talk about the market every day here. But we are still in a bull market. You still have confirmation over that nine day. You're still not up near the 40, 480 on SPY uh, where this is. But I, I still like it. I like this 50 day to bounce off that 200 day and we continue in the uptrend for the long term. If we're looking at the four hour algorithm uh, on SPY, you're still in it. Yeah, the nine day has kind of turned a little bit downward. Uh, you're well above the, the 200 day, so it would be due for a little downturn, but I, I still think the markets are huge. Um, by the way, uh, I will include, uh, my weekly stock pick has included three, he's doing um, three uh, new algorithms that he's tr testing out, and there's three stocks that he does. Um, and again, these go through uh, the same kind of process. Buy on Monday, sell on Friday. Um, so I'll include that in the newsletter. But back to SPY, Tom Lee, who's been right way more than he's been wrong. Uh, he was bullish all last year, uh, got his kind of ha head handed to him, but he has been 100% right this year. 
Uh, he thinks the S&P rallies over 100 points this week with the CPI data coming out on Wednesday. Uh, he believes that the S&P, which means SPY, will wind up at 4850 would which would equate to $485 on SPY. You're trading at 438 So he believes that's where we end the year. Uh, what did I do in, in response to Tom Lee this morning is I bought QQQ. And or, I'm sorry, TQQQ. Uh, I think the, the QQQ is going to explode again when we see that the, um, remember, there's seven, seven stocks that have been driving this market, eight stocks, the grade eight. And in my mind, I think we continue on that, that, run, that run. The eight stocks that go up have to be the ones that move in order to move the markets either down or up. I think they continue up. Um, not all eight, but I do think they continue up. And overall, TQQQ in my mind, at 30, right now it's 30, trading at 39.72. Um, I bought at 30, 39.70 uh, this morning. I have another lot in there at 39.70 if it gets down there again before it opens up it here in four minutes. Um, I like it over 40. So I, I, I bought some on Friday, one lot. I bought another lot this morning, uh, and I'll buy a third lot this morning. And I think if Tom Lee is right, I'll probably wind up being really, really happy at the end of the day. Uh, let's talk about Uber. I like Uber under 40, and I've been saying that for a while. It has not gone under 40 since since I said that. This is 39.80, uh, June 2nd. I said buy it under 40. So when it was down here at 37, I said buy it under 40. Uh, it is at 42. I think you're looking at a $50 stock by the end of the year. And I think that's if they become profitable. Let's see when their earnings actually are. Their earnings are later, so it's not coming up any point in time soon. They are losing money. Um, but what was shocking to me was uh, the Kashikari sold stocks. And it's not on Finviz yet, but it, I, I saw a report that he sold stocks for the first time in two years. Um, that's not good news. And so I would tell you, wait for this one to get under 40. Here in pre-market, is it? it's at 42.80. <clears throat> it cl closed at 42.92. Got you out with a 5% gain. I would have said, hey, get, get out at 46. If you got in here at 39, because that is close to a 15% gain. The MACD is, is on its way down. The RSI is in no man's land at 50. I think you can get this under 40. I think this volume shelf that is right here um, at about 3902, I think that's a good volume shelf to deal with. I think you'll come back down there. Just be aware that this one could move big on some news. Another one that I noticed this morning as I was uh, scrolling through some of my own uh, is Schwab. I've said, hey, Schwab was a buy under 50. It's a $60 stock at some point in time this year. You're at $57.70. At the, at the, basically, I don't even think, I, I think their earnings are coming out July 17th, it looks like. In my mind, I think this one's great. I do think this is a great stock. Under 50, it was a great stock. Here at 57, I'm a little less bullish. But if you want $3 in a stock and you want a 5 6% gain and you want something that's solid, Schwab is your, is your, is your stock. I mean, if you look at this one, it, it was a $75 stock here before all of the banking crisis. $2 billion is what their bank is actually worth. Now, the overall company is worth $102 billion. $2 billion will not take down an entire company. So I, I, I still think it's a buy right here. Honest to God, I think you know at some point in time, I may buy it. I'm going to announce which one I'm going to buy at the end of the day here, but I am going to buy another stock today. Um, just a shout out, Nick from Canada wrote me the kindest, uh, I can't respond when you guys subscribe to the newsletter. If you go down to, uh, if you go down to the bottom of one of these newsletters, there's always a subscribe button or paid button. Um, Nick from Canada wrote me the kindest note about, Hey, you know, I'm willing to pay for it and you do great work. And, and I thank everybody for their nice notes. Um, you guys are awesome. I got a bunch of other messages. I can't respond to those messages, unfortunately, when you sign up, uh, other than being a creepy dude who you know, goes into your DMs and emails you directly, which I'm not going to do because, I don't know, I feel creepy about it. Uh, but 
again, thank you so much. Um, you guys are really, really nice about it. But let's talk about Weeble because I said on this one, uh, Weeble is the third link down here. You can get 12 free stocks if you use that link. Now, what I like doing is on Monday, Weeble puts out, and I'll put uh, screen captures of what I see in Weeble. I put $1,000 into Weeble. I think I'm at like almost $1,200, so I'm up, um, what, 20%, which isn't horrible. Pretty good. Um, I don't have anything fantastic in there. I think I could have done better, but I've been managing the the the, um, the the portfolio fairly well. Let me see. What I don't think I'm at 1,200. Let me see. I'm going to look real quick. 11.35. So I was at 1,200, but I lost 70 bucks, I think, over the past week. Um, I do think that, that remember, it's $1,000. So I am tied to that PDT rule of under $25,000. So it's not like I'm day trading in there. It's nothing exciting. Um, but they give this great Monday view. And, and part of it is, and I'll put it in the newsletter, is uh, – the earnings calendar. I don't have to go to earnings whisper anymore to see it. Um, we have American Express coming out. We have Procter and Gamble. Uh, we have Delta Airlines, well as Wells Fargo, BlackRock, Citigroup. BlackRock is coming up on Friday. Wells Fargo on Friday. Citigroup on Friday. That's pre-bell. Procter and Gamble, Cintas and Delta are pre-bell on Thursday. Um, you've got Morgan Stanley uh, on, on on Wednesday morning. American Express is one on Tuesday. Amex has been an interesting one because I'm not an Amex customer, or I'm sorry, AMX. Oh, that's American Mobile. Uh, God, why was I thinking Amex? Um, but this one's Thursday. Why am I thinking this one? Ugh, ignore my rant. Um, your boy can't see in the morning. But the other thing that uh, that Weeble put out this morning was major economic news and core inflation rate year over year, July 12th. Core inflation rate month over month, um, January, July 12th. It's all the July 12th. It's the expectations of inflation. And then on July 13th, you get the PPI, which is the producer inflation. And then on July 14th, you get the Michigan consumer sentiment. So I, I think overall, it's a great, great app. Um, I like waking up on Monday morning and looking at it. So if you want to put some money in, Go over to Linktree. It's linked down below. That third one is is Weeble. Put $1,000 into there. I like it. I mean, I, I, I really do like Weeble. A again, find yourself a good brokerage that you like. It, it's worth its weight in gold. Um, I'm going to move over to Boyle because your boy Boyle, uh, Boyle has made a big move in pre-market. It closed here at 62. I'm sorry. It, it opened at 62. I think it closed. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go over to. Active Trader Pro and look real quick because the market is open right now. Oh, and by the way, TQQ is over 40. Um, but uh, Boyle uh, looks like it closed. It opened at 61.89. Um, it closed at 58.95. It's at $62. So Boyle is making a move. It, this got you out with a 14% gain, a 14% gain, uh, even after that reverse split of 20 to 1. 14% gain, this is going to get you right back in. Uh, do you buy here at 62? I don't think you're doing yourself any disfavor by buying at 62. It is Natural gas is super, super low. So I, I think Boyle, as we head into summer here, as you head into more uh, Ukrainian fighting, as you head into Russia ain't pulling out of Ukraine, Russia ain't going to provide... Um, uh, natural gas to Europe for next winter. Europe is going to have to use their resources uh, and their storage ability, and they're going to have to buy more expensive. It's going to go up. Natural gas is just going to go up. Uh, if you don't want to buy Boyle, because Boyle is just a, a levered ETF on the price of the futures, buy a company, and that's LNG. LNG is uh, for uh, Chenier Energy, and this one has a huge gap up here at 161 to 164. You're trading at 151. I say get this under 150. That's what that yellow line is. If you buy it under 150, you can sell it over 150. I think this one fluctuates a little bit. I think if you buy it under 150, I think you can wait until this winter where it goes up to 160. Remember, these guys pay somewhere in the neighborhood of $15 for natural gas to load it onto a ship and stuff. They're selling, last year they were selling it in Europe. For close to 100 150 So the same $15 block of natural gas, they're making that much profit. Huge, huge opportunity. 
Um, two things that I want to point out that TrendSpider launched, and, and you should absolutely 100% bookmark, and I will include them in the newsletter for you. The first one is trade, uh, trade, TrendSpider's Learning Center. It's not just about TrendSpider. This is all about technical indicators, chart patterns, chart analysis, chart types, order types. Yes, it uses um, TrendSpider's actual charts to graph it. You don't have to be a TrendSpider uh, subscriber to actually use this learning center. Between this and TrendSpider's YouTube channel, you can learn everything that you want about trading, everything about charting. You can take a look at this stuff. Styles of trading, account types, trading terminology, trading com sets. It is a one-stop shop for absolutely everything. Um, but if you do sign up for TrendSpider, the benefit that I give you is when you sign up through me, I give you my algorithms, I give you my uh, watch lists, and I give you my scanners, everything that I use here. Uh, so I give it to you for free. You basically, I send you a welcome letter. Anybody that's signed up for TrendSpider understands, hey, um, you know, it, it, it is unbelievable. And you get 25% off when you sign up through me as well. So it's, I think, 420 bucks. Just make sure that that is worth it for the amount that you're trading. Um, the second thing that TrendSpider launched is this. This is their market, uh, markets.trendspider.com. It is an unbelievable uh, tool. And, and I'm finding it incredible. Like for instance, if we go and look, uh, let's look up, uh, the one that I want to look up is Palantir, PLTR, because they love Palantir. Um, they absolutely love parent Palantir. The CEO, Dan loves it. <laughs> I think he's been a long time, like bitcher and complain about, it. but look at this seasonality. This is, you get this stuff for free. The seasonality of it, options flow, um, you know, advanced that data unlocked. Um, but again, you get about, it's got a ton of the stuff that Finviz has just in a significant, um, easier way to look at it. Graphical, which I like, and you can do, uh, open advanced charting. You can do advanced charting. Again, you don't have to be a trend spider, uh, subscriber to use that. So I'm going to uh, bookmark both of them. I suggest you guys bookmark them. I'll include them in the newsletter. Uh, Joe on Facebook, for EV stocks, I'd like you to look at PSNY. Yes, not making money, but production is in full swing with over 50,000 uh, delivered this year, last year. Demand is good. Adopted the Tesla plug this month. Really nice cars, model lineup planned. Uh, a guy at work has one more plus than the Model 3. I do like Polestar. Uh, PSNY is the symbol. Uh, I've seen these cars. I like the cars. I think the get it going into Tesla. The the what what will happen is they will integrate Tesla into their car, the Tesla charging network into their cars over the next coming year. Uh, it's not immediate. They signed the deal, so it will happen. Here's what you have to know about Polestar. Uh, I do think Joe is right. It is significantly more plush. Than, um, than a Tesla. Teslas are plastic. Teslas are fairly, you buy a Tesla for the tech, not for the finish. Um, these cars, they, they, I think they partnered with Volkswagen, if I'm not mistaken, and, and they've got their uh, platform on Volkswagen. But it's, uh, it's super, super nice. And it drives nice. Um, it's got the range that, that you want. Uh, so I do think Polestar is, it, it's not a bad long-term play. I would tell you, it, we'll go to Finviz and we'll look. Uh, like Joe says, yes, it's not making money. You do have a volume shelf level here between 521, which is going to provide some resistance level. But there's a lot of people holding. Look at how many people are holding up here at 10. So PSNY, let's go over to Finviz and take a look. Um, uh, Polestar, they're losing $485, $465 million. They have a market cap at $8.99 billion. Um, cash, they don't say how much cash they have on hand, which worries me a little bit is, are they going to have to um, uh, dilute? Uh, oh, yeah, it's Volvo. Yeah, Joe just corrected me. It's Volvo, not Volkswagen. It was one of those Vs. Um, the average price target is uh, $5.50. So you're trading at $4.49. You got some upside to that one. Um, it does look like most of the uh, the $7 range. Yeah, February, April, and April, $7 is, is the most recent. So you do have some upside. No insider sales 
So I think you're good. Joe, I, I mean, here's the thing. I think it's a good car. It just costs a lot of money to make these cars. And so I think while Tesla is making money, they're the only EV company. The, well, I shouldn't say the only EV. They're the only ones making EVs that are actually making money other than Chinese companies. And Chinese companies, you got to kind of uh, ask yourself, um, you know, is it audited? Uh, real? Are they really making money? Are they, you know, like Neo? Neo was one that uh, they were almost bankrupt, and it was way back. I'm going to look at a weekly on this one because. Um, this was way back when I was trading it. Um, and I think it was like 2020. Uh, I think it was around here. Yeah, it was around COVID. They took a big leg down somewhere. It might have been this. And then the Chinese government just decided, you know what, we're going to give you $10 billion and you're going to continue. And then it just shot up. And so I'd be a little bit careful with Chinese companies, but I think PSNY, I think Polestar, I agree with you. I like the cars. Um, and I'm rooting for them. Uh, Baba's up. Uh, Ant Group. Uh, they the Ant Group was fined. Um, the Ant Group announced a a buyback, and Baba is up to 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 ninety dollars and fifty one cents. We got a buy in here of ninety one oh five on the morning candle. I said, hey, buy it under ninety because I think you're getting back to a hundred. I think you're going to one oh two. It's just starting to cross it. I think Baba's a play. I like it here. Corey from Instagram was uh, curious if you've heard of AGNC. It came up as a stock pick when I was using GPT-4 to choose some possible undervalued stock. What caught my eye is the 15% dividend and its 10-day average volume of $10.5 million. Uh, AGNC. Let's look at AGNC. Um, this is an investment group. I think I told, I wrote him back. Yeah, it's a little bit of a falling knife. Um, look at that MACD right there. Right now, I wouldn't be in this one because it really doesn't have any kind of confirmation over that nine day. You're kind of just hovering around that nine day. You've got a gap down AGNC. Let's take a look at some of the financials. Usually, um, there is a reason that they have a 15% dividend. Uh, it's a REIT. Um, so the reason is that they just don't reinvest a lot of the stuff into them. The average target price is $10.42. It's trading at $9.75. Um, upgrade from JP Morgan to $12.50. I don't think it's a horrible one. I just think you have to be aware. Uh, this EVP bought $98,000 worth at $8.91. Everybody's selling at nine. Um, I think you have to be aware that REITs, the reason REITs pay the, the dividend is they just don't reinvest. And if there's a, a case where they have to reinvest, you're going to get one of two things. You're going to get diluted or you're going to get a reduction in the dividend. Either one's bad for stockholders. So understand what's in the REIT. Um, I don't know specifically what's in the REIT, but I, I don't know that it's undervalued from a long standpoint. Um, let's look at the weekly real quick. Because look, I mean, there's a reason it pays um, you know, 15% dividend. And it looks like it's getting tough to hold on to that 15% dividend, to be honest. That that's right there is around May 2020, May 2021. You're at $18 and you're at nine right now. I think it's undervalued for a reason. Um, I, I just don't I, I don't see a, you know, again, MPW is one that Sherry has brought up. Um, that is beaten down kind of the same thing. Uh, MPW is medical properties and, and they're seeing some positive momentum because medical properties are actually paying their rents. So, um, Corey, I'd be careful. I'd probably look into your, you a sophisticated enough investor to look at into, um, exactly what that is. Um, let's see, Cecilia, why don't we look at TSL, uh, Tesla or TSLQ? I'm not sure which. I did uh, in this um, daily stock pick, the grade eight. Uh, I did a great analysis of Tesla. I'll look at Tesla overview. Their earnings are coming up. Um, it's on July 19th. So next week, um, I'd be slightly concerned of this run going into this. Uh, I think that there's this gap down here at 235. 
I, I, I think there's a significant volume level support at 250, which you can see poking out right there. If I move this back, it's right here at about 257 or so. Um, but from a long-term perspective, a good company with good earnings and good products should return back to highs. This is part of the, the paid group. Right there, you still got 50% to get back to your highs. Uh, you still got, let's see, if we go even, if we go from today's stock price down here, you still have, what, 61% to get down to your lows. So you've got 50% up, 60% down from all-time highs. It, it's a bit in the middle. I would say 250 is probably your swing, Celia. But wait for the... I don't know that I'd trade this into earnings just because we don't know what's going to happen. Sit there for earnings, wait till the, the stock comes out with earnings, and then maybe trade around it. Uh, LM Shannon on Facebook um, put out this great LYSCF is the stock. LYSCF. Let me put that in. It's rare earth. Um, this is a super, super small cap. So just be aware this is a super, super small cap. I will put all of the research they did. Uh, in the newsletter. If you're part of the Facebook group, you can read the post, uh, even a link to uh, an overview uh, of uh, TMRC, which is a good example of the overview of TMRC, uh, which just fantastic research. Now, without looking at all the things that you posted, which means you know a lot more than I do about this stock, let's take a look at them uh, because I don't want to be influenced by what you see, but I can't even find Finviz on it. L-Y-S-C-F, can't find Finviz. So I can't find anything about the actual company um, just from an overview perspective, but let's take a look at the stock and would I be in it. Um, right now, $4.91 is the buy. You're trading at $4.70. You just got out of a 14% gain on this one. The four hour algorithm makes you 7% over two years. Whereas if you just bought and held, it's 3% uh, for the actual asset. The 65-minute algorithm, which will run on this one, uh, this one over an eight-month period makes you 20% versus losing 10% on the actual asset. So it first off, clear to me, you're better off trading this than owning it just because I don't think owning this one does you any necessarily good. I mean, if you're only making 3% over two years, um, versus 7% in trading, I think that's a good sign. Now, $4.91 seems like a little bit expensive. Long term, it looks like you're trading just above the 200-day, uh, kind of like you said, LM. Uh, I just don't think that this one's going to go under the 200-day. I mean, it hasn't other than COVID. And you said rare earth minerals are going to be around for a while. I think you're right. I just can't find enough about the fundamentals of the company that it would make me a little bit nervous about it. Um, uh, they barred investment in their company from being owned or bought by Chinese investors that could manipulate the rare earth global market. There will be two new facilities, both located in Texas, uh, one in the Sea Drift. The U.S. government awarded them $120 million to better secure the U.S. rare earth capa capabilities. Both facilities are expected to be operational in 2025. I can tell you it's not making money, but I, I think people are betting on it. I'd probably find a better bet. Honestly, I mean, it just looks like it's been pumped up. It's a small cap. I would find out more information, less about rare earths, more about the company's financial conditions, what they're going to do, how they're going to use that $120 million. That's what I would be more concerned about. Um... TrendSpider put in, is Netflix about to run into earnings? History suggests it might. The strategy enters long 15 days prior to earning, exits the day they report. 1,300% return over the last decade with a 71% win rate. It took another entry on Thursday. Uh, import the strategy. So if you have TrendSpider, I'm going to include this link. And you basically just, it's just like when I send you my, my links, you log in and import and you just basically import it into your, uh, into your strategy. So here we go. We're going to go over here and I'm going to look down here. Um, where is it? Um, 
strategies do, 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 do. earnings earnings run up by trend spider there it is and we're going to run on netflix and it runs there boom 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 440 you're trading right at 440 right now so uh if, if you're looking at this it had you a 4.22 percent two percent five percent again trend spider says uh, if you just do this over 10 years it's a 1300% return. What's nice is that you just basically buy it and then sell it right after earnings. It's been a couple where you've lost, um, but if we look at the long-term history of this, um, for this year at least, I mean, 22 and 23, looks like, you know, ever since it's been in that downturn, you've been winning on that one. So I like it. Uh, QQQ. TrendSpider has some history with the 370 resistance level. Uh, this is a chart from TrendSpider, and that I'll include it again in the newsletter. But 370 looks like it's a crazy, crazy um, resistance level. One, two, three. 2022 and this year in 2023. So where are we on the Qs right now? Let's take a look at QQQ. Because your boy just bought triple, uh, triple Q. 364. Um, let me look at this, and we'll go to the four-hour. Uh, QQQ is at 364, 370 is that resistance. Are we heading back there? Eh, it'd be a little bit of a, of a stretch. Um, but uh, let me look at Active Trader Pro uh, and look at TQQQ just because I bought it this morning. Uh, is it back under 40? Uh, it is back under 40, 39.40. So uh, we took a big turn down, it looks like it opened. Oh, your boy didn't do too well. Um, but 364, again, 370 is that resistance level that you saw. Sherry is a uh, fan of Fubo, and she sent me this article, and it's three growth stocks with 55% to 71% upside. The first one is Fubo TV. Read about it. Um, they talk about some of the costs of local sports. As a former cable executive, I can tell you that's a huge part if, if you guys are old enough, most of you younger folks probably don't subscribe to uh, cable TV. But if you do, remember, every year they raise your price. And you want to know why they raise your price? Because their prices go up. Uh, and they have to keep their margins. So 35 40% margins is what they're looking at. So in order to do that, say ESPN, um, you know, ESPN is the most expensive with their suite of ESPN services uh, that Disney provides. And... You know, say it costs fifteen bucks for a cable company, uh, and then they raise it to fifteen fifty. Well, guess who's getting not getting a fifty percent raise, a fifty cent raise in their rates? You're getting a dollar raise because they want to keep that margin up. So that is where Fubo TV might get into trouble. Uh, I think it's a good trading stock. I agree with Sherry absolutely one hundred percent that it's a trade stock. Um, 210 was the entry. You're trading at 226. Great trade so far. Fantastic trade. Just got you out of a 7% gain here, which you could have gotten even higher. Um, with that button hook right there, it came down under the 9-day. Sell when you're under the 9-day. You're still over the 9-day on this one. So I, I like it. Uh, just realized 227. I don't know what the upside really is on this one, um, but costs are going to hurt this one. And so your, your uh, earnings are coming up August 3rd. Shay likes it going into earnings. Hey, if they announce some type of crazy number that they, they've gotten a new, uh, uh, a, a new amount of subs uh, and the subs are growing, I think you're looking at that one being a good one. If you look at um, uh, over on Finviz, you can see they're losing $367 million. They have about $2 per share. They have $290 million. They're going to have to dilute at some point, I think. Uh, February downgrade from Evercore, $6 to $3. If you move from $2.27 to $3, it's a great move. That's from February. So I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities. Um, you look at some of the options exercises. Nobody's really selling. The last sale was at $2.74. Um, again, if you buy at $2.20 and you get to $2.74, you're happy as pie. So I, I don't disagree with Sherry. I just think it's a trade, so be careful with that one. Uh, there was a Bitcoin call uh, this morning where uh, it was Standard Charter 
made a, uh, a call that Bitcoin would reach 50,000 this year. You know who's going to benefit from something like that? Mara. Uh, Mara is trading at $15.40. You're getting this button hook. Charlie from Zip Trader went over Mara last night. Uh, that MACD is stretched. Uh, the RSI is in overbought territory at 65. It's going down. I wouldn't necessarily get into Mara right now. I still like $10 for Mara. I think Mara comes down to probably this realm at 12 um, at some point in time. Uh, you can look. I, I mean, just look. We'll pull it back here the last time it ran up. Um, this was April, the last time it ran up. Look at your volume shelves. You're just not putting the volume in up here. The volume shelves are down here at around 10 at around 12. So I would wait for this one to pull back to 12, add a little bit at 12 in order to get your exposure in. This is, again, if you're not exposed. If you don't have any shares of Mara, I would get into this one because Bitcoin right now is at about 26, 27,000. Um, I, I think you have opportunity there if Standard Charter is right and it goes to 50,000 at some point in this year, which it absolutely could. So as far as scans go, let's talk about Arch. This is a coal company. I don't believe that this one's growing anymore. But coal's becoming uh, less and less um, uh, of a uh, uh, differentiator, meaning that there's just one company that provides it, and they're providing it to China mostly, and China's actually increasing their, their, um, their demand for coal. Uh, they're building more coal plants because they can't, uh, the, you know, renewable energy and stuff like that with the demand power that, that China requires. And coal is just their best bet. So Arch Resources, here's the danger of this one. Um, at, over a uh, two-year period, uh, Arch Resources, the, the asset makes you 88%. Trading this one only makes you 0.8. So I'd be very careful of this one because it's been stretched. It is just stretched. And the only reason it's stretched is because, again, China's demand for coal has been huge. Uh, another energy company that came up with a cross-up, COP, uh, ConocoPhillips. Uh, this one I like going to at least 110. You're under the 200 day. The 200 day is right there. Uh, energy just hasn't had a, uh, there hasn't been any love for energy. I've talked about PXD. Uh, my choice is PXD, uh, which is, uh, let's say PXD, 206. Get it under 200. Uh, it's at 206. I've, I've been tell, telling you this one. 204 was the buy-in on PXD, but ConocoPhillips had a cross up. SMDD, this is one of our levered ETFs. It is the mid cap 400. Um, this is the short. So this is assuming if we get the cross up here that the mid caps are going to go down. Well, if inflation comes back uh, and you see this, you're going to turn down. I bought TQQQ. I bought it just at 39.50. It's now at 39.20. So your boy's not making money on this one. I've doubled down, but I do think that we'll probably get above 40 at some point in time in the next month. I identified it as a long trade. Uh, probably not great right now. Doesn't feel good, but I went over that in the paid newsletter about how I feel about long trades getting in. I'll have a stop loss on it, uh, but uh, three lots that were smaller, uh, total lot size will be 10. So I've got 30% of my 100% lot in there. But SMN, SMDD is the one. ILMN. This is one that Kathy Woods loved. And then she got out of years ago. Uh, probably about two years ago she got out of. 183.34. This is a $200 stock in my mind. If you look it up on Finviz, uh, they are not making money. Uh, the forward PE is a little bit expensive at 58. It's a genomics kind of company. Uh, she didn't like it. She knows better than I do. Could you trade this one? The average target price is 238. Um, and it does have recent uh, in January, 235, 216. You're trading at one, one uh, let's see, 184. So I think you do have some upside. You're on the below the 200 day. If you look at the weekly, it's well below the 200 day. Was this a run-up to 500 that was unjustified? Probably. Uh, do a little bit more research. I do have this in a, uh, this is in the S&P 500. So I believe it's a, um, a well-audited company. Uh, the other one that has been recently, we talked about this one at 40. It's now at 44 and it's got another cross up here. 44, 48 is the buy-in here. 
got another cross up. It's just kind of capitulating around that 200 day. If we look at the long, and this is BK, by the way, Bank of New York. This is one of your smaller regional banks. So it's it's one of these that's kind of, it's not in danger because I haven't heard that it's in danger, but it's a kind of regional bank thing. Uh, the earnings are coming up, blah, 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 I think this week, um, July 18th, so next week. Um, and I think they could announce that there's something positive. Look at this stock. I mean, if you look at this stock, this was a $60 stock, um, you know, just recently in February before the, the crisis. I mean, look at how far it fell uh, last year in the lows. And then it came out in February up to 51. So I, I do think you have some opportunity there. If you know anything about banks, BK is one. Okay, that's the podcast. Again, uh, to go over some things, this is my link tree. This has all the links, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, I don't have TikTok. I don't know what that is. Oh, uh, that's Spaces. <laughs> um, and, and then you've got Spotify and you've got Apple Podcasts. If you want to tip me, there's a tip up there for Venmo. Uh, or if you want to use ca uh, Cash App or PayPal, they're all down below. Uh, the newsletter is right there. First sponsor is TrendSpider. If you click on this link, you get taken here to TrendSpider. And it will basically, if you go to plans and pricing, my 25% off that I give you, I think it comes out to $420 for the year um, right here. Uh, let's see. $79 a month. It should be $20. Uh, buy now, yeah. Skip the trial, buy for $468. $468 is what it is. Um, so you can get two months free uh, right now. Uh, Elite, I guess it's two months free if you pay for the yearly. If you go to monthly, it is $79 uh, with a free seven-day trial. So $79 a month is what it is. Um, but that's, I think that's my 25% off. It should be my 25% off since I clicked on the link. Uh, what you do is you sign up, you send me an email uh, with your uh, email address that you signed up with. I will confirm that you're in my program. Then I basically email you uh, the all the links. And you have to be in my program to get all the updates. If you're not in my program, uh, you won't get some of the updates when I do update like watch lists and scanners and things like that sort. So uh, that is the first sponsor. The second sponsor is Visible. If you go here and you sign up for Visible, I just saw that Visible um, is kicking off people from their old plan. So if you haven't updated and you signed up through me, do that. Click on that link. You get $20 off your first month. It, it's basically $25 a month. I pay $25 a month, unlimited service on Verizon. It's not some off-brand like network. Uh, it, it is Verizon Network. It's the best network out there. And I pay $25 a month. Unlimited service. Not deprioritized until you use 50 gigs of service. It, it, nobody's using 50 gigs of service. Come on. If you're using 50 gigs of service, you're out of your mind. Uh, third sponsor is, is, is Weeble. Again, I went over to it earlier. I love Weeble. I've got $1,000 in there. I like their app. I really do. Um, so, uh, there's your sponsors. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Uh, have fun. Good luck. Let's hope that TQQQ actually turns around for you, boy. It'll be interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm in it for the month. Okay. Take care. Bye.